To get the food she needs, Japan must find other ways of using the modern methods which have come to her ancient shores. Success of technology depends on raw materials. And in Japan, the main raw material is people. Skilled craftsmen who, in countless home workshops, practice ancient trades perfected over many centuries. From tiny factories manned by half a dozen relatives, and from huge industrial concerns, come the textiles, cotton, silk, and rayon, which amount to a third of Japan's exports to the entire world. Textiles are sold abroad to buy food and raw material. And the skill that goes into them is a stockpile of wealth, which can also be traded with the modern world. Most large American companies have business interest in Japan. Using manufacturing techniques as modern as any in the world, Japanese hands in this American-owned plant make electronic computers. They are sold not only in Japan, but to other countries in Asia. But even in the most modern factory, the past creeps in. This young secretary prefers, for her small task, the ancient abacus, or soroban. The Japanese have made rapid advances in television in recent years. The actor is Seshu Hayakawa, once a star of the American silent screen. The play is an adaptation of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. Tonight's installment tells how tragedy struck a French home. Although the Japanese have learned much about the people of the Western world, they are also fond of their own ancient traditions. Their oldest sport is sumo, a kind of hand wrestling between 300-pound giants. A famous child dancer prepares for a television appearance, again with emphasis upon the past.
Japan's camera industry is an excellent example of what the Japanese people can do with their limited resources but unbounded skill. Requiring little in the way of raw material, but infinite labor and time, the Japanese camera today is equal to any in the world. The industry is the pride of the Japanese, so much so that everyone takes pictures, even a couple on their honeymoon. With the money she makes from her sales abroad, Japan buys many of the foreign goods she needs. Cotton, coal, iron, wheat, and even tons of rice. Japan is America's third best foreign customer and the largest purchaser in the world of American agricultural products. Japan buys annually from the United States twice as much as she sells. In Japan, where gasoline and almost every other kind of fuel must be imported, there is one major native source of power, which lies in the mountains themselves. For Japan, poor in most things, is rich in water. Great power stations, many constructed with American aid or other international loans, are the center of vast networks of transmission lines. These bring light to almost every single dwelling in Japan and supply power converted from the strength of the rugged mountains to the furnaces and machine tools and assembly lines of Japan's growing industries. At an industrial fair in Tokyo, excellent road building equipment is exhibited. Side by side with the orange monsters at the fair are self-propelled pogo sticks or tampers. of the South American buses now being assembled shows that the Japanese are as good at selling machinery as at making it. These diesel engines were constructed 10,000 miles away in Columbus, Indiana, shipped to Japan and installed here in chassis and body. Eventually, the truly internationally made vehicles will run in the streets of San Diego, Chile, an example of Japanese skills exported for mutual benefit in an interdependent world. To meet the demands of the merchant fleets of the world, Japanese shipbuilders are turning out ships for many nations. Nagasaki is one of Japan's largest ports. It once lay under the ashes of an atomic explosion. Its people have completed the back-breaking job of rebuilding what the war destroyed. Japan today actually constructs more ships than any other nation, everything from trawlers to 80,000 ton oil tankers. The steel of a giant tanker in Nagasaki is made of coke and iron, most of which must be imported. All of this is put together by Japanese workers with electric tools whose power comes from their mountains. This tanker is a symbol of the part the mountainous islands can play in world economy.
now that the sea is no longer a barrier, but a bridge to the nations of the West. Japan has many problems as she faces the future. How can her people maintain their newly won human rights? How can this small country remain secure and independent? Above all, how can she feed, clothe, and care for her millions of people? No one has a complete answer. But all over Japan, young people are discussing these problems. Everyone has a different point of view. This respected teacher sees hope in close cooperation with the United Nations and the West. The girl, a news reporter, is concerned about freedom of thought and inquiry and the question of rearmament. The agricultural expert speaks of new kinds of crops and food sources. A young electronics engineer talks of technology. But by his side is a university graduate, unable to find a job. Each has his own idea, but all agree that Japan's greatest problem is one of economic survival. Their future and the future of their children will depend on how hard they work and how well they succeed in buying and selling as a free nation. When they grow up, the children of Japan will have little to work with in the way of land and material. But their skills, their energy, and their will to work are unique and will count. In these factors lies Japan's hope for the future. <laughs>